Hey everybody, Josh here for Your Turn Go. Today I'd like to show you a little bit about Valley of the Kings. Valley of the Kings is an AEG deck builder. It's a very small game, but a deck builder nonetheless. It shares a lot of things uh, in common with most deck builders, but it has a few little twists. So uh, I'll give you a brief overview and we'll see what I think. When the game begins, every player gets a player aid if they like, which shows the order of a turn, what things you can do in a turn. Every player will also get a tomb, which is where you will store your victory points through the game. You'll have a starting deck, which starts with one offering table. You'll have two boxes of food, because you're trying to store treasures in your tomb before you die. So you're going to need that food in the afterlife. You're going to have three urns and four Shabti statues. So each player will create a starting deck, shuffle the cards up, and place it face down. Now the rest of the game is set up as follows. There are three sets of cards in the game. Your starting deck cards are level 1 cards, as you can see in the bottom right in the pyramid. There are also level 2 and level 3 cards. You'll shuffle all the level 2 cards together, shuffle the level 3 cards together, and place the 2 cards on top of the 3. And this becomes what's called the stock. Now many deck builder games will have a set of cards that are bought throughout the game on each player's turn. And they're usually laid out something like this, or sometimes there'll be a larger array. This game is slightly different. Instead of having five cards in a row, or some array of cards like that, there will be a pyramid of cards, keeping in with the theme. Now, the cards that you can buy are only the cards on the bottom row. And as you purchase a card, cards from the top, from farther up in the pyramid, slide down. You can buy multiple cards in your turn, so if I next bought this one, I could choose one of these two to slide down, so let's say I did this. At the end of the turn, you can then repopulate the pyramid, or you have to repopulate the pyramid, with more cards from the stock, and then play goes to the next turn. You can see that a card will have a gold value, which is used to purchase other cards there in the, in the pyramid. The cost of the card that you use that gold to buy is there in the upper right, and at the bottom, you'll see victory points. Uh, in this case, this guy's worth three victory points. All other cards that aren't unique like that one are in a set. This one is uh, in a set of three, for example. And I'll go over scoring later, but the idea is that you want to get sets of different cards in the same set. So, different sarcophagus, sarcophagi, different books, different statues, and so on. During your turn, one thing you can do is entomb a card, and that's where you put the cards that you want to score at the end of the game. So let's say I had this hand, and I want to entomb a card, so I can choose this one. It gets placed under my tomb, and that's always visible for everybody to see, and I can score points at the end of the game for whatever cards are under my tomb. So cards will also have actions. In this case, it says sacrifice a card in your hand. Take a card with a cost up twice as much as the sacrifice card. So during my turn, I could use this card not for its gold value, but for its action. In this case, I remove this card from play, and I can take an, a more expensive card from the pyramid, anywhere in the pyramid, not just on the bottom row. So I lose that card, but I potentially gain a more expensive card. At the end of the game, every player will count up their VPs. For example, every unique card, which is these purple ones with that symbol, you just count up however many VPs it's worth. For other cards, you would take different cards in the set, for example, a Book of the Earth, a Book of Traversing Eternity, and let's say a Book of the Heavens. Let's say I had those three cards in my tomb. They are all unique, so they will all score, and they are all green, and in the same set, they're all books. At the bottom, you can see these six in parentheses, meaning that you can have up to six in the set to score at once. If you had a seventh card, that one would not score. Or if you had duplicates, those duplicates would not score. The way you score sets is you take the number of cards in the set that you have entombed during the game, and you just square the number. So in this case, I would have nine points. If I had four, I would have 16 points, 5, 25, and so on. Up to six in this case, so 36 max for books. So this is a nice little deck builder. It has a lot of flavor to it. It's a little bit different than other deck builders, so it'll give you something slightly different to, to play with if you're getting bored with the deck builders you do have. It does play from two to four players according to the box, but on Board Game Geek they have actual rules for a single player variant. Here at Gen Con in a few days they're supposed to be releasing a addition to the game, an expansion, uh, which will allow solitaire play with that as well. So Valley of the Kings from AEG. It's a nice little small deck building game. I think it retails for about $20. So not too expensive, and it has uh, plenty of punch for its small package.
So I recommend you pick it up. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like us, subscribe.